Good morning and welcome to AI Daily. I'm your host, Ethan, joined by Farb and Connor today, as always. Today is June 28th, and we have three fantastic stories for you today. The first one is Unity, and then we're talking about some ML benchmarks, and then Snowflake and NVIDIA, as well as some great stories that we have on our own. So the first story of today is Unity. So they announced Unity Muse and Unity Centis, really bringing AI-powered creativity to their whole stack. So across that, they've also dropped AI-verified solutions. They've dropped Muse Chat. So Unity is really trying to say, hey, how can we continue to sit at the forefront and compete with Unreal and make sure that our customers are integrating AI in the ways they might be using other tools for right now? So, Barb, any comments on, you know, what, what do these mean for Unity? Anything that stood out for you? I think it's a pretty comprehensive uh, initial stab at this. You can plug in other AI models uh, into their world. Uh, probably the coolest part for anybody who's doing that is that the models are going to run on device so they'll be running on the edge which means you're not going to have to pay uh, for all of that ai processing yourself as a, as a as a provider of that new functionality to an end user for example whether it's powering you know ai based npc chats i mean like the npcs are going to become less npcs than some npcs are so it'll be really interesting to see that stuff hit the real world. I think it's in a closed beta or something right now, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if you think about this as the beginning, well, wow, it's gonna get re really crazy from here because these are some pretty powerful tools to come out of the gate with. Yeah, well, I, feel like, I feel like we've kind of seen this coming ever since people started making these demos and making these tests with their own GP4 APIs and Unity. And Unity actually, has announced it quicker than I thought they would have. I thought they would have taken them another couple of months at least. So between the Muse chat and between the Centis being able to run the models in Unity games, very exciting. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. They, they almost got this internal app store. So when you want to sell your own kind of models, similar to assets of the past, it looks like AI models. Centis, of course, you can actually put these models in your game. And Muse, hopefully we'll see even more games created much faster than ever before. So really cool stuff out of Unity. Our second story of today touches on three companies. We have Inflection, CoreWeave, and NVIDIA, all kind of putting their weight together mm -hmm. to show some new benchmarks on ML Perf. So if you remember Inflection, we talked about them yesterday. They, of course, released Inflection 1, but they're also a Foundation LLM provider. And then CoreWeave and NVIDIA supplying all the new H100s to accomplish this. So they were pretty much able to train a GPT-3 similar model on almost 3,500 H100s in gosh under 20 minutes i think it was almost 13 minutes they were able to train this in so huge benchmarks showing the power of the h100 connor any comments on really just what this means yeah it's kind of just a win for all of them really it was 3584 h100s and it hit the gpt3 benchmark in just 11 minutes so blowing everyone out of the water i think the previous record was a couple of days so NVIDIA once again cements that the H100 GPUs are the best in the world by far, crushing AMD or anybody else. CoreWeave shows just how many GPUs they can get their customers' hands on with. And Inflection shows that they know how to build models and they know how to do what they're doing. So very hard to find. Combination of the three, it's really just a, a puff piece for all of them, but makes them all win. So, yeah, uh, the ML perf benchmark has been the baseline for how fast can we train an LLM and comparing from last year to now, huge gains. Farb, what does this mean just for the space? You know, this is definitely kind of a puff to all of them, but in terms of this benchmark, it's pretty important for LLM. So what do you think this means for the space? It's pretty awesome for CoreWeave, which is, you know, started not too long ago. Uh, I, I remember them uh, back in the coin mine days, uh, reaching out to them. They were very early and new back then. Couldn't even get some of their GPUs up and running. Their site was 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 so new. It's awesome to see them come so far so quickly. Uh, obviously exciting for the other folks too. One one more feather in the cap of Nvidia uh, and Inflection is trying to play a little bit of catch up with some of the other folks that. Uh, that are out there in the space and th this will help them do that. You know, expect to see a lot more of this coming pretty regularly. It'll probably get to a point where it's not as big in news when you see things like that, but it, this is early days and uh, these partnerships are still new and fresh. Absolutely. Huge cluster, huge gains, and we're just going to see those times decrease even more. So really cool out of that. 
our last story of today is Snowflake and NVIDIA have announced a partnership. So Snowflake has pretty much said, hey, all our big enterprise customers that have data here, we're going to add what's called Snowpark container services. And we're going to let you run workloads directly from your data on top of NVIDIA GPUs within Snowflake. So this really like tightly, deeply integrated environment for these enterprises with all this data. Barb, what do you think of this one? You know, it's containers all the way down, as they say. Uh, and it's, it's, it's crazy to see that the Docker world ex explode over the, over the past years. I, we, you know, if you've been around for a little while, you, you were around before the, uh, Docker and containers were, were the, were the thing. And now they're sort of a, a benchmark and a standard. And, you know, it's important for data security and data security is just going to be a bigger and bigger deal as time goes on. So don't see this stopping anytime soon. And it's awesome to see these types of, uh, features and services being provided to folks that I'm guessing it's going to be used pretty heavily. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Connor. Yeah, this is once again another another example of incumbents like Snowflake acting faster maybe than some people would have thought. Um, partnering with NVIDIA so that you can run your own code inside of Snowflake servers on GPUs. Pretty big jump for people who use Snowflake, which of course is a lot of people. So Yeah, absolutely. I think their main gain here is, you know, just partnering with NVIDIA and getting access to these GPUs. I think the tooling they're providing might not be enough for all these enterprises. There's so many different use cases they're going to need, but that access to the GPUs is critical here. So big partnership for them. Um, as always, what else are y'all seeing, Connor? Yeah, I saw RoboCook. It was a partnership of researchers from Stanford University and Tsinghua University in Beijing. They made RoboCook, which is a robot that knows how to do soft, manip soft manipulation of multiple tools. And then the final final example they showed is that the robot knows how to make dumplings off of just 20 minutes of interaction of training data with the tool. So very cool. Very cool. Barb, you? Yeah, the, the, the Chinese are uh, obsessed with food automation in the best way possible. I think Asia in general is probably a bit of a, ahead of the game uh, versus the rest of the world in food automation. They really love it. They have a lot of it. Uh, and it's, it's really cool. I think it's the future. I'm personally really into that stuff. So I love, I love to see it. I've got a good friend in, in, in China in the tech world, who's also sort of obsessed with it. So him and I are always talking about our, our, our food automation dreams with each other. Maybe they'll become a reality one day. Uh, I think I, I talk the rest of us will catch up in time. So we'll get there. But yeah, for sure. For sure. It'll, it'll be everywhere in the future. It's just cool to see, uh, somebody out there really, uh, blazing the trail for the rest of the world. I love it. And, uh, you know, there's some Canada has decided it's trying to throw its hat into the tech game uh, and start welcoming tech workers there uh, with visas. You don't even need a job to get a, you know, sort of like a tech visa into Canada now. Uh, you can do a digital nomad visa, which I think gives you six months there. So it, it's, it's nice to see that the, you know, different parts of the world are opening up to tech workers and, and trying to make it easier. If you have an H1B in the United States, you can go and work there. Canada, not, not messing around. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting that like geopolitical UK also recently did their high potential individual visa. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, geopolitically they're all racing for this AI talent. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, if I, I saw, you know, n nothing insane here, but just really commenting on this activity of the startup and VC space. We saw five early stage VC firms all announce new funds yesterday. Um, so congrats to them and more money in the ecosystem. The ecosystem continues to hype up and more startups, more money, more creation. So exciting as always. But as always, thank you all for tuning in to AI Daily and we will see you again tomorrow. Peace guys.